Hi everyone, Rhino here. I just finished reading How I Paid for College, a novel of sex, theft, friendship, and musical theater by Mark Aceto. And guess what? I want to talk about it with you. Um, so let's just dive right in. I promise this video is going to be a little bit shorter than the Jonathan Van Ness video I made that was like over an hour long. But um, I don't qu have quite as much to say about this book, although I do love it. This is actually one of my favorites. Um... I read this book. So this book was published in 2004. A little backstory about me and my journey with this novel. Um, I, so for me, I uh, graduated high school in 2003, went to um, college in 2000, the fall of 2003. I did not like the college I chose to went to. So I transferred one to, uh, to another one closer to home and commuted and I felt lost and then I ended up not having enough money to pay for books to return to school. So I thought, well, what am I doing? I feel like I'm just kind of um, just like drowning here. And, and so I was feeling very lost. And that's where I was in the fall of 2004 when I worked at Borders uh, Books and Music, which I still miss, one love up above. Um, but I, I really do... I, I missed this because of the spontaneity of how this book was recommended to me. Basically, a friend of mine that I work with picked it up off the shelf, said, hey, I, I read this book. I, I think you'll really like it. Emphasis on the you. Later on, after I finished reading, I was like, what did you mean by you'll really like it? Um, he's like, I don't know. He knew. Um, but yeah, so uh, I was definitely in a different place then when I read it than I was today as a 35-year-old. So as a 19-year-old reading this and 35-year-old, it's kind of uh, it's kind of interesting for me. I, I saw a lot more stuff with the parents this time that I, I didn't notice the first time. Um, but first and foremost... I did enjoy rereading this book. This is the second time I have read this book. In fact, the first time I read it, I liked it so much, I wrote to the author immediately afterwards, and uh, he was kind enough to write me back because I told him I bought uh, copies for everybody I knew for Christmas that year, and he he sent me autographed book plates, which was really, really amazing. Um, and unfortunately, I let somebody borrow that book, and uh, what an idiot I was. I need to stop letting people borrow things. They they I figured out who I let borrow it, but then it turns out they let somebody else bother it. What? So uh, that book's long gone, and it sucks because it was autographed. But I got this one on eBay. It was definitely like a library book or something because it's got the plastic shiny binding on it. Um, but then also, uh, check this out. Autographed. Awesome, right? Really cool. So um, uh, it's kind of like this weird full circle thing. It's the hardcover. It's autographed again, and so I'm happy. Um no, so anyway, I, I uh, rereading this, I really did enjoy this. When I was in school, I was in, I was, you know, we didn't really call ourselves the play people or the theater people, but I was in theater, and that was definitely my favorite club to be a part of. I felt like it was just, uh, I, I don't know, just something about, it's the same reason why I went to school for film. It's this whole thing about, I love the idea of um, this mode of storytelling that really kind of brings all these people together in different aspects to tell this kind of unified story. And the cool thing about theater, or, you know, even film, is just, it's this version of a vision. And they even talk about it when they do Godspell in the book, how um, the teacher, um, uh, Mr. Lucas, how he has this version of it where it's set in the 80s in the high school. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And so I think about that, how they all kind of come together, they work together. It's it's something that gave you purpose, maybe when you were just like so like everywhere. And after high school, you know, when you have this paradigm shift and you leave every person you've ever known all of a sudden at the age of 18 to go out into a school where you know no one usually, and then you have to start all over, it can be overwhelming. You can feel lost. And, and I never really understood how much purpose like these after school clubs, like student council, um, you know, peer leadership, all these things gave me until after it was gone. And so this book for me, when I I read it when I was 19. It really helped me. It was that. And then also the fact that the character, you know, this is the first book um, other than Perks being a wallflower where it's not the main character, but um, the the best friend Patrick is gay in that. But this is the first book I had read where it was like the main character was really kind of like, I have these feelings and, you know, and he's bisexual. But it's like it it's it was the first time I'd read a story like that where it was interesting because I wasn't um, 
I wasn't just, it wasn't something where I felt like, oh, it's just, it's just me. That's just a part of me. It was like, it always felt like it had to be this like secret, you know, like super secret, like superpower or something. So I don't think about it in a negative way. I just think about it. I just wasn't, I wasn't like openly telling anybody about it. You know, I just, I didn't mention it and I just kind of hope nobody asked and it, it, it was what it was, you know? And so a book like this for me around that time was just, it was awesome. And then um, it's interesting. I understood a lot more of the 80s references now than I did when I first read it. It's funny how I know the farther away from the 80s, the more I know about it. And I don't know if it's just reading this at just the right time when that kind of 80s, 90s nostalgia is hitting really hard with like Stranger Things. You know, Bill and Ted is having another movie, um, you know, mining basically remakes of anything from the 80s to come back is is really uh it, opportune time i think this would be a really good um maybe not even uh i always thought this would be like it's a self-written movie but um i actually think this could be a really funny netflix uh original series um you know you'd, you'd uh, probably modify a little bit you know um maybe make a little bit of the sex a little less um risque or something like that but um no, I loved it. I, I loved how it was written, too. I noticed now a lot more. I loved how it was kind of written in that style where it was, like, very um, over the top and just, like, dramatic because that's the type of person that our main character Edward is. He's very dramatic. And, you know, um, I wrote down a couple of a couple of things here. Not, like, pages and pages of notes this time. I, I chose to read this one differently than the other one. The other, It's different when you're reading a true story versus fictionalized stuff but then i also know marcus you know, i think went to juilliard so i'm like how much of this is true um but no i i um i i thought it was very humorous and everything um i still laughed a lot i, I there's jokes i laughed more at this time than last time and i really understand why i liked it so much when i was 19 i mean the 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 st when it was sexy it was sexy when i was younger because i mean i i was so close in age to edward that it was very relatable in all those those ways so it was just kind of like you know everything burns a little bit hotter when you're younger right you know emotions hormones are raging all that sort of stuff um i'm trying to find my notes right here that i had forgotten to pull up how unprofessional of me um but um, things like this, Edward would say um, on page 110, he said, the room feels suffocatingly sm small for the enormous thing I'm about to say. I just love that line. I don't know why. I just think like that line is the definition of the type of character that he is, too. Um, I don't know how, every, uh, how all of you felt when you were reading this, but I did try to read this um, once before years ago. I And even when I first read it, I always feel like I... I struggled with the first couple of chapters, like just the first and second chapter. And that could be that way for any time I read a book because I do feel like it takes a moment to get into that, um, the narrative uh, pacing and rhythm and uh, kind of dialect that's being used. So, and since Edwards is very unique, I feel like it takes a little bit for me to get into him, you know, get into that character and, um, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's like you become the actor reading this. I don't know if anybody else reads a book like that, but also I find that when I'm reading, like deep in a reading, so if I read like five or six chapters and then I'll I'll go downstairs and have um, like a snack and just kind of stare out the window and I'll be like narrating in my head, like what would the novel be sounding like as I stared uh, longingly out at the people outside who swam in their swimming pool? But there's no swimming pool outside and I'm not staring longingly at people in the swimming pool. Do not alert the authorities. Um... No, uh, what did I say? Let me just go through here. and I'm just going to read the couple of notes I had here. It's got a one or two. Oh, there was something about, I really like there's a message in here when they go to the gay, the gay piano bar. Um, it's, uh, it's called something for the boys. Um, and okay. So I'm going to start. Ziba is saying this to Nady, uh, to the whole group. I, I think that's how you say it. I don't know if it's Ziba, Ziba like zebra i read it like zeba um so zeba pauses to blow a smoke ring something for the boys she says it's a gay piano bar i didn't know a piano could be gay nady whispers it's only attracted the other to other pianos i explained zeba ignores us by turning to paula and kelly the best part is that you don't have to be concerned that some cretin will hit on you kelly nods being the kind of girl who cretins often hit on sure doug says that's okay for you but what if someone hits on us he points to himself and me Zeba gives him one of those deadpan looks like Cher does to Sonny after he said something stupid. 
Any man who's secure in his sexuality shouldn't feel threatened by the attention of another man. She drones. She fixes her dark gypsy eyes on him, daring him to contradict her. I'm cool, Doug says. My uncle in Germany is gay. <laughs> and then Aurora says, Jesus, enough with the Germany thing already. Um, I always... I. I love stuff like that. There's a lot of this written where, like, you can imagine yourself thinking this one thought. I, I don't know. That's how I saw it. But um, I wrote the birthday cake thing towards the bottom of page 41. I'm not sure uh, if what I meant by this. Oh, okay. So, so Paula and I sit in the dark, swatting at mosquitoes as I light the candles on Coco's cake. This is the magic moment of birthday cakes, the moment that Paula and I love most. This is the time when they turn out the lights and everybody starts smiling at you and your mother comes through the door and the only light in the room is that fuzzy sort of glow from the flame on your birthday cake shining on your mother's face and your mom is smiling that proud kind of, I'm your mom smile and you're smiling that embarrassed kind of, this is my day smile and then you close your eyes and you make a wish, any wish you want because it's your day. Then you blow out the candles and everyone claps and then best of all, you get to eat cake. With Paula's mother long dead and mine long gone, neither of us can get enough of that feeling. Paula blows out the candles, not her usual make-a-wish kind of way, but in a glimpse, a piece of that goddamned cake kind of way. This was supposed to be my magic summer, she says softly. There's just something... I, I, you know, I mean romantic in the non-dating way. You, you know, there's something kind of romantic about this, this thing with cake that I never really thought of, that it cake is like magic right like we have it i guess it's kind of drilled into us because we make a wish the birthday stuff it's associated with such a special moment that like it's something i never really got and now i read that and i was like okay i want cake (laughs) yeah but um just i love that you know um edward talks about his mom uh, a lot here too um and then um Oh, I have to read this one thing about how Edward's birthday is like January 5th and mine is January 1st. And I think his has got a great, uh, mine, I, it's still acceptable to have the Christmas tree up. His is, the, he says something about it having that dead Christmas tree sort of thing. Excuse me, almost there. I'm just asking for a paper cut. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me see. I know it's in the middle of a paragraph. Okay, he says, The 5th of January always has a bleak, dead Christmas tree by the curb kind of atmosphere. Not to mention this whole, this is for Christmas and your birthday thing. But I like the symmetry of being one age for practically the entire year. That way the year takes on the character of that age. Instead of being split awkwardly like if you were born in May or October, it's simpler. The year I was 10, 1976. The year I was 14, 1980. The year I'm 18, a legal adult at last, 1984. I always think that's great. I was born in 1985, and I feel that same way. So it's like, boom, how old were you in the year 2000? 15. Nailed it. How old will I be in the year 2065? Well, it's 65 plus 15. I'll be 80. That 65 does not feel as far away as I wish it did, and now I'm concerned with my own mortality. I just did it to myself. Um, but I do, I, I think maybe that was another reason why I just loved that sort of thing, that thought about the birthdays and you know you're out there you're like oh i gotta buy a gift already again mm-hmm. and there's one more comment that's just made so offhanded that i just thought it was a fun like inspirational thing so it's like edward and nady are talking about how he's gonna pay or how much money he's made so far to save for school and so um so uh edward says i'm not sure who us is but i figure let him have this chairman of the board fantasy there's uh eight hundred and sixteen dollars no nine hundred and sixteen dollars I say adding in the hundred bucks Dr. Corcoran gave me. Yeah, I know that makes me a whore, so what? That's it, Nady says. Yep. He sighs, all right, ten thousand dollars minus nine hundred and sixteen dollars leaves. Let's see, nine thousand eighty four dollars to go. Oh god, I'll never make it. Get your head off the table. People eat there, he says. Let's look at number two. Scholarships, any progress there. I love that quick line. I know he's probably literally got his head on a table. I don't think it said it before this, but I just love that idea that like, you know what it's like when you put your arms around your head, you put your head down and just like get your head off the table. People eat there. It's like something like I want it on a shirt or something. I I just feel like it's I'm reading way too far into this, but it feels inspirational to me. And I'm going to take it that way. I'm going to take it that way. Um, I don't know about you all, but I really enjoyed how it kind of finishes up. I love that he went through all these extravagant means. I love that they all kind of came crashing down and how it all kind of comes around with like Frank Sinatra and all this stuff. But 
I I also really enjoy because it, this is how his mother was, but the mother just kind of aloof, like says, oh, I wrote it. What are you talking about? Al said he had to pay for college. You know that. He knows that. Neither, nobody knows that. It's just like, yeah, of course you know that. It's like how she talks about how she communicates with him, but she doesn't. And she's like, oh, well, it's telepathically. And you're just like, oh, my God. Like, what is wrong with you? And that's that's kind of like it's this whole her like son kind of went through hell just to, to do what he loves. I also like that there's this whole thing where he keeps saying like he wants his mother, it'll make him feel better. And then when she's there, it does not make him feel better. So it is one of those, another one of those things where it's been a romanticized thing, you know, the thing where we have uh, these people that hold these kind of archetypal roles in our life, um, you know, and so we throughout our entire lives expect them to be taking on the characteristics of what that role is supposed to be. You know, it's sort of like a gender defined role. Like, you know, when you say somebody like, Oh, this is for the woman, this is for the man, which I hate. Um, and this is kind of that same thing. Well, this is what they're supposed to do. This is what they're supposed to do. And then you realize like, they're just kind of people too. And that's real of all the adults kind of in this. Um, it's like, uh, the father, you know, trying to, he wants to be happy with the this other woman and doesn't realize how she's kind of ruining his life and unfortunately he's taken advantage of her but like think about mr lucas too having this whole other life where he lives in the city and you know he'd had this accident and you kind of think like oh well maybe he'll be angry or sad about it and the way he when edward is in his apartment when he's intoxicated i i kind of love how he is in that scene how um you know he he this is the 80s and you know and and so there's a lot of the stuff going on that's kind of alluded to in that scene and um he just is trying to he's a mentor for this kid through and through you know and 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 he feels you know so his role is unexpected and then i think about uh kathleen kelly's mother and and how she's like if i had to do it over again would i and she's basically like, no, like I love my children, but I, I realized that I lost a part of me that I didn't realize I was losing when this happened. And I, and I like that portrayal too, because it's not always that rainbows and sunshines and this is perfect. And being a parent is this or that. And so it's just kind of, she's got this sadness that she can't seem to fill. And it's just interesting. All the, all the adults in this book are kind of like that. And I love Nadie's parents. I think that's hilarious how he tells them always what exactly he's doing. And then it's this crazy thing. And there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of like, there's just some of funny, really like, I can just see it all getting really tense and being, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I don't know if you saw the politician. Um, I felt like I enjoyed it enough. I don't feel like it was as good as I thought it was going to be, but it, it's that kind of like, I think something like, like Ryan Murphy probably could have taken this book and done something great with it, I think. Um, and honestly, I still haven't given up hope that this will be adapted. I mean, if I have to do it someday, I'll do it. Uh, but I'm trying to think what else, what else, what else, what else? I mean, it was funny. It was, it was endearing. I, I, I loved, um, just a couple things while I was reading it, there was some sort of, I don't know if anybody else struggles with this, but when you are reading and, you know, obviously whenever you're reading, you're kind of reading from a character's perspective, depending on how the author writes, you know, third person omniscient or whatnot. And uh, it's like, you know, the book is set in the 80s, so he's got to have an 80s mentality and some things aren't like social no it's also new jersey and some like social norms of the way they think about some people or just feel a little off to me it's like one or two words here and there where i'm like Ugh. but then you're like well it's the 80s i guess they would have said that in the 80s so i don't it didn't happen enough that it was like oh no what have i done but it was like once or twice where i was like uh, is this gonna go somewhere um but i you know at the same time i'm also like i guess that is realistic too to how it happens i mean i don't it's like if you read Stephen King's it and you know, the stuff, the very graphic stuff that happens in that and the words they use and the slurs and stuff. And you're like, I want to believe in real, like the author is not every single character in this book, but it is also an author that brings these characters into existence. Right. Or is that the actor? I don't, I never know. Um, but just something that I, I often think about, you know, but um no i i want to know how you thought how you felt about it so um let me know i'm really i'm really really happy i did reread this i hope that um i hope that some of you enjoyed it at the very least um if you hated it i'm sorry um don't trust my opinions anymore <laughs> 
and yeah, let me leave me some comments in the comment section of this. You can um, you can reach out to me on social media too. It's R Y N O one one eight five on Twitter, Instagram, and um, yeah, I just I just be curious to see your thoughts about it and whether you enjoyed it or not. I know a couple of people already reached out and said they enjoyed it. Um, my good friend Nicole was like, "How does he pay for college?" And I did not realize that you get so far to the end of this book without it really knowing and you're like oh yeah how does he like i actually forgot i was like oh how you know i knew the i when we got to the embezzlement scan i was like i don't think this works out right i don't know um but no i thought it was good um i am uh so you know at this time people always say oh well, what's the next book club book well i don't know that if i'm gonna make an official announcement or whatnot but i never actually read the sequel of this book there's one sequel and it's attack of the theater people and um you know i started reading it once and I, it's just it was one of those things where just life all of a sudden happens and you're you're losing it but also while i was reading it i was like oh no i i don't remember i don't remember the first one as as well and you know, like, oh, I want I want the first one to be fresh in my mind. So I, I wanted to go back and reread this. And now I have this one's about 100 page, pages longer. Um, I'm going to read this next. If you want to join me on this journey, please do. I will tell you the next book after this, because I've already pre-ordered it, is going to be that Hunger Games um, sequel or prequel, excuse me, uh, which I will tell you the name of right now. I pre-ordered it the other day on Amazon because it was like a sale. I think it was like $13 or something like that. Um, it's called The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, okay, by, by uh, Suzanne Collins. I read all the other Hunger Games books, so I figure I got to read this one, right? I, I mean, I'm not reading that Midnight Sun that Suzanne Collins – or not Suzanne Collins um, – Meyer, whatever her name is, um, wrote and, and – uh, yeah, and I've seen some things that are questionable about her now, too, that I'm already, well, I already knew she was kind of weird, but those were guilty pleasures. I actually really enjoy the Hunger Games novels, if you never read them, I, and you've seen the movie still, I would still read the books, because I do think they're they're worth reading. Um, but I will be reading Attack of the Theater People by Marcus Ito, um, and then I will be reading that. So if you want to do that, please do. And But like I said, let me know what you thought of How I Paid for College, comments of this video, Twitter, Instagram, wherever. Um, I'll see. Maybe we could do another one of those live chats and ch and talk about it if you guys want. I don't know. I don't know. I had fun chatting with people the last time. So maybe we'll do it again. We'll see how it works out. I don't know when. But stay tuned to wherever social media and I'll let you know. Or if you subscribe to the channel and you like click the bell, I think it'll notify you whenever I go live. It'll notify you whenever I upload a video because I know it's not consistent timing. But I have a lot of work to do. Um... I know everyone's quarantined, but it does involve a lot of work to do uh, what I do with videos and editing and uploading and all that stuff. So it keeps me pretty busy, um, you know, and yeah, so uh, that's it. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for taking this journey with me. Uh, and uh, I'll see you next time with another book club video. Bye, everyone.